the Royal Blue Podcast from the Liverpool Echo. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Royal Blue Podcast. I'm Phil Kirkbride, and today joined by Adam Jones, Gav Buckland, and Dave Prentice as we chew the fat over all the major talking points at Goodison Park. This is the pre Derby podcast. We'll also be looking back at the performance in the defeat at Leicester City. And of course, as we have been for several weeks now, um, discussing the future of manager Marco Silva. But I'm going to start this podcast by asking the lads to give me a one word summary of the situation as it stands with the football club. But a one word to, dis- to sum up this current situation. I'll give you mine's confused yeah I was, I was going to say <laughs> looks like a lot of boys I was going to say cruel after uh, after the weekend but no um, disappointing that's an old Walter Smith line isn't it um, yeah confused is good um, it's, it's it's such an awkward one to try and sum up because it's nearly an okay season you know nearly um, so many games have, you know, sort of hinged on very, very crucial moments that have uh, gone against Everton, unluckily in a number of uh, aspects. Four times this season, we've we lost, lost to last, la- well, that, we've conceded last minute goals. Mm. Uh, two of them have confirmed defeats. Two of them have actually, you know, sort of turned draws into defeats. That's more than anybody else in the Premier League. Um, we've lost, you know, sort of players to injury, really, really vital players. Um, oh, I don't know where I'm going with this. It's a, it's just, a, it's just a <laughs> dreadful, dreadful season to be honest. Dreadful. There, dreadful. You're there you go. Dreadful. We got, yeah. we got there. Um, uh, Gav, what's what's your word to sum up? The what do you say? Confused? Can I say confusing? I want to say Plano mentioned that they're awkward. Okay, you can expand now. Go on. Why? Well, um, for lots of reasons. Uh, first, but then not the position where we should be. Um, We've got Bromley more on the horizon, which is predicated on us staying in the Premier League. It becomes awkward for talking to investors while we're third or fourth or from bottom of the Premier League. You want to invest based on us remaining in the Premier League. Uh, the management situation is awkward. Because of our injuries, we've got awkward team selections week in, week, week out. Uh, and I will say that. Good. Nice one, Gab. Uh, Adam, what's your word? To uh, the situation. Lost, maybe. Okay, yeah. A- adrift, something like that. Just seems like in a lot of in a lot of facets of the club at the minute we're stumbling around in the dark looking for a solution that's not exactly an obvious one. Not least in you know in terms of on the pitch. I think that was most apparent against Leicester. You know we rolled the dice, looked for a different solution, and still found the same outcome at the end of the game. Uh, obviously the managerial situation. I, f- I feel like we're just stumbling around looking for something something to change something to come out and really reveal itself as the right answer uh yeah I'd, I'd say just lost at the minute and yeah it's it's certainly affecting fans yeah I mean but both the guys there have nailed it I think aimless is another one you could probably yeah. throw into Adam's uh summary there um we want some kind of direction really don't we we want to know what's going on you know so at the top of the come I understand why you know there is no obvious public statements, you know, so the, the powers that be are waiting to see what happens. Uh, but the fact that there is no overwhelming show of support for Marco Silva publicly, you know, I know Marcel Brands has given a statement, but, you know, it didn't exactly, you know, sort of offer a Philip Carter-style vote of confidence in Howard Kendall, you know, sort of all those years ago. And it makes you think that they are desperate for him to turn it round, you know, to, to avoid that you know, get a result at Anfield, get through the quarterfinals of the uh, Carabao Cup and give them a little bit of breathing space then to at least, you know, sort of see the job through a little bit longer. But while results continue to go against Everton in the most heartbreaking fashion like they did at the weekend, uh, there remains, you know, sort of a silence and that leaves people feeling a bit aimless and wanting to hear something a little bit positive and a little bit, you know, sort of a bit of conviction on a plan and there doesn't appear to be one at the moment. Um, you know, the number of names have been put forward as to possible replacement should the decision come to re- replace Marco Silva, none of which have really found any favour with the support base, which again lends to that air of aimlessness. Uh, I mean, you two guys just come back from Finch Farm where uh, Marco Silva, you know, I didn't see it myself, but from what I've heard, he was he was looking a little bit aimless, looking like he was, you know, feeling quite crestfallen about the situation. I know he was perkier with you two privately than, than he was, you know, so with the national press afterwards. 
But you just worry, is that then filtering onto the players? Are the players starting to also detect that, you know, sort of slight air of aimlessness? And once that happens, you know, the positive performance that we saw at Leicester for an hour or so quickly starts to deteriorate and you find yourself in a bit of a tailspin then. Well, Gav, that, that, that for me was, um, and I'll get your take on it, that for me was was the, the crucial thing post-Sunday, was how Marco was going to and how he will have to pick up the players from a, a defeat that felt damaging for him, for mm. the team, but for what belief the players had actually shown. Again, they showed they were behind the manager and I yeah. don't think anybody's in any doubt that the majority, if not all of the players, are behind the manager. But it was such a deflating, dejecting way to lose a game, such an important game, having worked so hard to a plan. Yeah, we weren't great, but we'd worked to a plan and, and, and had done well to sort of keep Leicester at arm's length, so to speak. Do you have confidence that going into the biggest game of the season, or the toughest probably, biggest is a good one, of course, but the toughest game of the season, the players and the manager can still have the belief that they can go to Anfield and get a result? Yeah, uh, I do. Um, because you got to perform out to Leicester. That Leicester didn't you after the Norwich defeat? You think if you know what you're saying there, you think that deflation and not playing for the manager and everything's a bit woolly would have affected the performance at Leicester, wouldn't you? Because we had the other week to, to stew on things, everything that was going on. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you've got a performance at Leicester, I see no reason why you can't get a performance at Anfield. In fact, I would argue to say that in some respects, you draw a little bit of confidence from the Leicester. Okay, performance. Go on, go on. I absolutely despise that phrase, take the positives. <laughs> <laughs> we can't but, take but, much but, else. <laughs> but, no, but what, you can, what you can say is that, that you, you see in the setup of the team was was it really good, I thought. Um, I thought, you know, one, again, Marco is far more comfortable managing against the top six team and, and, and Leicester. Or Leicester are the well, top Leicester 16 and, and they're probably so, more than yeah. top 14. And um, so there's some pluses there. Uh, and I fully expect, especially being a bit, bit of Derby as well, I fully expect to see a performance from the players tomorrow. Um, whether that gets enough to, enough to get us a result is another thing. But I think if if there was going to be a problem with the players and Marco, I think it would have reared its ugly head before now. We would have seen it, wouldn't yeah. we? Yeah, as we have with other managers yeah. in the recent past. Yeah. And um, I know these things can degenerate quickly, but I don't, I don't sense that that at all. And, and, and if anything, sometimes a bad defeat can sort of an unlucky, an unlucky defeat. I suppose it wasn't in some respects. Can sort of gear up next time. But I'm, I'm looking forward to performance off the, the, the off the place tomorrow. I'm, I'm not saying like we're going to win there and they're going three 0 But I'm not going there thinking. You know, oh, we're going to be lambs to the slaughter. Today. It's not like Martinez going in in April 16. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It's not and like it, that at isn't all. That, isn't that like the the strange thing about the situation we find ourselves in, where it's widely accepted and acknowledged the the club? Yes, there is, as Preno says, there is a will and, a, and you know and a real hope that Marco could turn it round. But we all accept that the club have been searching for a replacement, speaking to people, trying to test the water if they make a decision. Yet the players are still behind him. And and usually, as you rightly said, Gav, the players you lose you know, the manager loses the players, right? Yeah. You're gone. But it hasn't happened like that, and so it's a strange balance, a strange mix of it's, of, of it's, everything it's, going on. It's all counterintuitive, isn't it? Yeah. Really? Um, yeah. And I, I can only say what I've just said. I think that reflects well on Marco, to be fair, well, and I think it also reflects well on the players. Yeah. Okay. You can. I mean, I know Norris. What Norris was a poor performance, but last seven games. Since the Marco had three games to save his job, came up. Also, seven games—the only game where they've not really played well is Norwich. Yes, you know, and all the other six games they've played well or put a performance in. So I, I see no reason at all why that can't can't carry on tomorrow night. The, the ironical thing for us, isn't it? Is Dare I say, things may become a bit more clear if we get beat tomorrow night. Yeah. If, if we won, yes. typical yeah. heaven, if we won, we just will do the bosses even more yeah. in some respects. I, I think the, the big problem as well is like the, the lack of key personnel. 
And obviously midfield yeah. has been ravaged, you know, so Fabian Delph, we've hardly seen all season, Jean-Philippe Gabamin, we haven't seen, Andre Gomez is taken out, so that's like, you know, effectively the entire midfield unit taken away. But still, there are issues up front. We still haven't replaced, you know, so Romelu Lukaku, I know I say every single podcast, uh, but we haven't. Uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin is at best, you know, so a young footballer finding his way, trying to learn his trade. He shouldn't be carrying the can on his uh, on his admittedly broad shoulders. Maurice Keane, likewise, a youngster still trying to find his way in a new division. So Richarlison has been doing the best job there and he's not a centre forward. Uh, but, you know, when he does it, he does it, you know, does it well, but he shouldn't be having to do that. That still hasn't been addressed, that situation. So he's having to grapple with that. And my worry, seeing Everson where they are on the table at the moment, I don't know if you, you, see, you saw that BC documentary recently, the... Um, uh, too good to go down about Manchester United mm-hmm. in 73 74. They weren't a bad side, you know, so they had some decent players on that side. Uh, they lost 20 games that season, 18 of them by a single goal. Uh, you know, the decisive one being at Goodison Park. And it was just like a combination of an awful lot of factors coming together. And I watched that and I thought, oh my God, I can see parallels with Everton at the moment. We're not a bad side. You know, we've got a lot of good quality players in there, but we're losing a lot of games narrowly. Uh, you know, admittedly, a lot of them are being two, by two goals rather than by one goal. But, you know, we are losing games that, that we should be winning. You know, home games against Norwich and Sheffield United. Uh, you know, so we're, we're losing them. And that worries me. I'm not suggesting that that means we are going to be involved in a relegation fight, but United thought that as well in the mid-70s. And, you know, they had to spend the season outside before they came, you know, bouncing back gloriously. And I just it just sends a little tremor of apprehension down my spine watching that. Especially when you yeah. think about who effectively sent them down. Well, yeah, it was Everton. It was us, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. That, that concerned me. So it we've, we've, doesn't matter how, we've got to get results. You know, we've got to start grinding out results um, in as pragmatic or as, you know, so ugly a fashion as that may be. And if that means parking a bus on field on Wednesday night and, you know, so playing, you know, so 10 men behind the ball, great, I'm happy with that. Yeah. You know, so I w- wouldn't have said that this time last year because, you know, we went to Anfield in expansive mood. Absolutely. And play- Mark himself was best performance as a manager. Mm. Everson was at Anfield last season and that was so cruel to lose that one. Uh, but that was open, it was expansive, it was, you know, it was good to watch. Uh, I'm not so sure he can do that with the personnel at his disposal this time round. So just go there and get some kind of result regardless of how you do it. That's... Silver must be almost in disbelief that 12 months on from that performance that Preno's just described, yes, we lost, of, of course, in, in horrible circumstances, but the performance is what everybody clung on to and said, wow, we've got something here. 12 months on almost to the day. Who could have foreseen a situation that we find ourselves in now? <laughs> no one. <laughs> no one, really. I mean, I remember coming out of that game at Anfield thinking, you know, once we'd had time to take stock of what had actually happened in the closing stages of that game, we were all thinking to ourselves, all right, that was a fantastic performance. I think we had games coming up at home against Newcastle and Newcastle, Watford. Watford yeah. And we were thinking to ourselves, right, let's bounce back, beat those two, mm. and then really see how we can progress for the rest of the season. And that was really the start yeah. of a, a really questionable run of form, which, you know, we all know. Uh, managed to write itself towards the end of last season. But, you know, looking at the Leicester game in isolation, I, I couldn't help but feel for Silva, to be honest, because that, I think that was the perfect culmination of just how unlucky he has been uh, this season. Now, I'm not saying he's not to blame for any, anything. You know, there's a lot of a lot of blame that does fall on his shoulders. I think his tactics have been uh, question questionable in some scenarios. Uh this kind of substitutions that he makes, his game management of his side, I think they can all come into question. But he can't account for the individual mistakes that are getting made by some of his players in these games. Like Especially for that second goal for me, there's nothing that Marco Silva can do about Tom Davis missing a four-yard pass. Like There's there's, there's no sort of coaching drill that he, he should be able to put onto Tom Davis so that he makes that pass. Like Tom Davis should be making that pass. Mm. And, you know... They've still got a lot of work to do to get the ball to Ianacho and for Ianacho to score, but it all culminates. It it all starts from there, and you, you do have to just feel for Silva. You know, he he changed up his system down to the injuries that he's been forced to try and deal with. I don't think the system played all that badly. I think it looked shaky in places, especially in the first half. But you know, the the end result is just. Ended up the same, and you know we've just come back from Finch Farm there, and it was the first time that Silva really looked a little bit dejected. Like he, he, he just seemed a little bit down, he, he, as if the, this situation was finally getting to him. That he realised that 
you know, he can call himself unlucky, yeah, but there's only so far that, you know, saying, oh, well, I'm a bit unlucky here, aren't I? There's only so far that's mm-hmm. going to get you before somebody goes, all right, well, if you're that unlucky, then something needs to change. Well, I'm kind of hoping as well that that is just for, you know, so the, the media's consumption, because if he's behaving like that, you know, so in front of the players, that concerns me. I, I can think of a number of occasions in the past when managers have been under pressure. I remember Walter Smith, when we literally had 11 fit players going to Coventry, Phil Jevons played and Peter Clark oh, yeah, played. Yeah, yeah. And um, everyone was like, oh my God, what's going to happen here? And Walter got really angry, you know, so started basically shouting at us, you know, so for having such a defeatist attitude and saying, <laughs> you know, so we're going to go there and give a performance. Don't you worry about that. And we won 3-1. It was like quite, quite bizarre. I mean, um, Howard, you know, when he was under intense pressure, um, used to say he would physically, you know, park his car up and steal himself to walk in with a cheery demeanour and a smile and a joke. And that's where your coaching staff, you know, sort of can help you out and can, you know, sort of keep things light around the training ground. Um, you know, it's Derby week, Duncan Ferguson, you know, should be the absolute cheerleader in that, you know, sort of dressing room, absolutely banging the drum and telling people how important this is and what this means. I'm presuming he does do that. So, you know, so it's got to be a team effort, you know, rather than Marcus Silva carrying the can. But yeah, if he is wandering around with a, you know, little boy lost look about his face you know that that concerns me a little I mean look in terms of balance it may have been a situation as I said uh, on the way back to Adam I said and we were talking about it I said it could have been a situation where he went Marco is not overly enthusiastic about doing media he's not somebody who relishes it but he understands it's part of the job and he gets on with it so maybe it was just a case of I don't really want to be here answering questions. It's an about obligation. My future. Yeah, that's going to yeah. be out the way. I don't yeah. really want to have to do it, but yeah. I've got to. Yeah. Let's keep it short and let's get it on. Let's get done with it. You know. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you still think that the language stuff comes into this? I, I think his English is uh, yeah, fine. Yeah, uh, I read something this morning about Emery. You know, about like our, our managers now pass their emails to. Especially in the, the multimedia age, is to, to sell the club and be expansive, and we, we all know the people we're talking about here. And to do that, you need to have a good command of the English language. And so uh, Silvers is, uh, and is significantly it, better than I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. But still, not what you would perhaps want, and that's not a criticism. Um, and I think sometimes that, that that has to be a limiting factor sometimes, hasn't it? And in, in up to a point, he didn't you know, hold back Pochettino at all, did he? I mean, he, he was, he was all for a couple of yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, but he, he got yeah. it though eventually, didn't yeah. he? And helps if your team's winning. Um, but yeah. I, I just think sometimes that come that might come into it if you if you're concentrating on what you're trying to say in a language which we may not be 100 percent fluent. Mm. It may may impact on your body yeah. language on on the way you communicate. Um, but you know that's that just the way it is as well. And uh, I, I just think that maybe that that hasn't helped on on occasions with his. It, it, his image, you know, but um, I think I think he you can fault him as a you can fault him as a manager, and Adams, you know, made some good points there, but you can't fault the way he's handled himself over the last month or so. Mm. To be fair, and that that's where I had a little I had sympathy for him on on Sunday, you know, with that with that result, though, uh, as ever, like did contribute towards his own downfall, I think. But uh, I, I've got sympathy for Silver at the moment. We, we sort of played this uh, scenario game in the, in the pod on Friday, saying what would a win, what would a defeat, what would a draw do? Um, without, <laughs> without trying to be too defeatist about it, mm-hmm. we have to be realistic. Adam, what would a defeat do for the manager's situation tomorrow? Well, it wouldn't exactly help, would it? <laughs> um, I, I mean, I suppose it maybe depends on the manner of the defeat. Mm. You know, if... If Evan go in and put, you know, a similar performance into the one at Anfield last season, show, you know, all those sorts of positives and, you know, unfortunately they may be caught out on the break by, you know, let's be honest, the Liverpool team who were top of the league and who were beating everyone they're coming up against at the minute. You know, th- there's a very good chance that even if Everton play well, they could get beat by Liverpool because at the end of the day, they're... They are one of the best teams in Europe at the minute. Yep. So it, it, it's it's very possible and, you know, perhaps... If they if Everton put in a good performance, you know the powers that be at the club will see that and they'll go right. Okay, well Liverpool are just a really good team. Maybe we've just got to try and brush that one under the carpet and you know we go again for the Chelsea game at home where you're thinking, well this is a scenario where we actually can be thinking right. We should be beating this. We should be winning this game. Mm. Uh, if 
if it's a scenario where, you know, we don't want to see it, but if it is like some sort of Martinez-esque sort of drubbing at the hands of Liverpool, then I, I just don't see where... Where do you go type Well, I don't, I don't see where, where Silver could go from there. I think that it'll almost force the club's hand in a way because... If it, it, like if Silver was to stay in charge then and he was to come to the Chelsea game at home, you know, the first home game after those chants against mm. Norwich, I, I just think the atmosphere is is starting on the back foot from from the first whistle then, and you just you've got another little bit of a mountain to climb to try and beat you know what is a really good Chelsea team mm. before you've even kicked off. So you know I, I think it would be if we if we were to get uh, battered by Liverpool, I think it would be extremely hard for Silva to keep hold of his job. But, you know, if it, if it is a really good sort of performance, even in defeat, then it, it, it could go either way for me. Given the fact that Liverpool, you know, despite their record this season, they're getting the job done. They are not the Liverpool of last season that was blowing teams away four and five goals. They're having these like 20 minute purple patches that were, you know, so basically destroying teams. Well, let me put to you this to you, Prana, because I was going to come to you anyway. And, and adding to what you've just said there, Liverpool have conceded in every game at Anfield this season. <laughs> I said this to somebody that was and, last week. <laughs> and they haven't got their first choice goalkeeper for the, the Be, game. Before the Brighton game, I said that, you know, so Liverpool have conceded in every single home game this season. You know when that's going to end, don't you? <laughs> and, uh, I said, you know, hopefully Brighton, you know, so will do it at the weekend. I'm sure enough Brighton scored. So, you know, you would hope that they are vulnerable enough for Everton to take advantage of that. And then obviously it comes down to the, uh, you know, sort of the, how they defend on the night. Uh, but no, there are, you know, I wouldn't say vulnerabilities about Liverpool. They only dropped two points all season, for God's sake. You know, so and that was at Old Trafford. Um, but, you know, Napoli held them. And, you know, so Napoli caused them problems in both games. Uh, Salzburg, you know, so I gave them a run around, you know, so for a while. Um, Brighton, you know, so gave them a, you know, a couple of moments. I know ultimately they were down to 10 men and they hung on. Um, but, you know, they, they, they caused one or two issues. So it's not the Liverpool of last season. You know, it sounds a bit odd to say that because the top of the league and flying. Uh, but they're a team that is just getting the job done at the moment. They're not a team that is absolutely, you know, so having this wonderful spell of form that, you know, is just absolutely cauterizing teams. So you can take that as a, as a positive. Mo Salah has apparently been playing with an injury or hasn't been playing at all. You know, Fabinho is so influential. He's been taken out of the equation now as well. Like you say, Adrian, we've got issues with Adrian, haven't we? Remember that FA Cup tie all those years ago? Yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, you know, he could be a bogeyman, I suppose. But he's a second choice goalkeeper, you know, so it might be a little bit rusty. So yeah, there are, th there are things and positives that you can look at. Um, so, you know, it certainly shouldn't be an absolute defeatist attitude. You know, you should be able to go there and, you know, think there's a way of having a go and, you know, so, and getting the results. And God, it's been a long time since we've, you know, so enjoyed anything, you know, so coming away from Anfield. So, you know, we do something. If that sounds like a drowning man clutching at a straw, maybe I was. Gavin, Gavin, I'm hugely oversimplifying this yeah. and, and any tacticians out there probably screaming down their phone and listening to this. But you take away your first choice goalkeeper, you don't have Fabinho, who is, who is a, yeah. a, you know, a, a big man, and I'm, I'm sure Liverpool utilise him defensively at corners. A set piece is key for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we nearly got in a couple of times on, well, exactly. on Sunday, didn't and we? And I'm really? talking, if you think about last season... Gary Mean is you one, isn't well, he? if you think about last, last season... Last season, should have scored exactly. in a minute, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mean. Yeah, they always are in that, Derby's, especially for us. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, I think I think the key for us tomorrow is set up, right? Um, and I think the, I would, for us to, I think, get a result tomorrow, we've got a set up similar to how we played against Leicester, but don't go three at the back. Because okay. if you, you go three at the back, you leave space on the wide areas of the centre eyes. That's where their full backs are pushing to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't anticipate playing. I'd like to just play 4 4 2 tomorrow, um, which is what Napoli did last week. Um, and keep, and there's probably a place for Key in there, by the way, based on his last 20 minutes. Right, okay. It's like Napoli last week, you know, they forced the Liverpool midfield that wide. And just got crosses in now. Okay, we haven't got Cooley Barley. I'm on a lot of centre halves. <laughs> but we did try in the summer of Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. What <laughs> could, could have we could have had them, you know? Um, but that's that's the way I think you should play them. It's, it's something similar to playing against Leicester on 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 uh, on Sunday. But don't play five at the back. Play four, and then you know what you do then is they can't. 
win the ball back. If they midfielders out wide, they can't win the ball back. Then it come, goes back into the middle. And um, I think that's the way I'd play it on tomorrow night. And then what, what they did, right? But you think if you have, like, say, the Charles or okay, you know, Calvert Loon or okay, you know, front, is when they're four box bomb four bomb, hit, hit the long ball into the space and mm. out, out wide for this and then pull their centre arms out of position. And that's the way I'd set up Interesting. tomorrow. I think that's something um, Richarlison was doing quite yeah, well yeah. against Leicester, wasn't he? He was pulling that C on you, yeah. especially quite, quite wide. And, and that's the way I'd set up tomorrow. Who the four, well, who the four defenders are, I think we probably. Who would you take out? Okay. I'd probably take uh, Holgate out. Okay. Um, it's funny what you were saying there, man. The, the original question yeah. that you, you posed, Phil. I mean, which team has scored the most goals from set pieces this season? Liverpool. Mm. Uh, I think 25% of their goals have come from set pieces. So how we defend set pieces yeah. is going to be absolutely I crucial. Th- I think that's because they've got one of the only players who can take a corner in the league these days. Like, yeah. I, d- d- yeah, people, I people just can't take corners in modern football anymore. Yeah. But to be fair to Trent Alexander-Arnold, he's actually quite good at it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, we 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 came away from from the King Power guessing ultimately, but thinking well, we would expect a similar setup at Anfield. Mm-hmm. Do you have you been given food, food for thought by what Gav said there? It's interesting. Or do you think actually five at the back, three centre halves again, try and pack out the middle of the pitch is the way forward? Uh, I don't th- I don't think five at the back's the way forward. I mean, I think. It didn't do badly against Leicester, but I, I think you know. Speaking to Michael Keane after the game, he said, "Yeah, it's position, it, it's roles we've all played before, but we are more comfortable in a four. So I'd, I just don't see why you wouldn't try and find a system that's going to fit your players a little bit better. Yeah. So I, I'd, I'd, I'd quite like to see us switch back to that four at the back. Although I think, I, I think personally, he probably will stick with the five at the back. I think there'll be a couple of personnel changes. Wouldn't be surprised to see Morgan Schneiderlin." Uh, come back into the role whether Bernard as well Bernard in, in place of a Wobie I think is, is going to be a straight swap but then who, whether Schneiderlin comes in for Davis or Sigurdsson's a bit of a with, a with the of five a even with the yeah, five with, yeah. even with the five so yeah. then you, you'd probably have to replace Sigurdsson with Schneiderlin Oh, yeah. it, it, either either yeah, Sigurdsson yeah. or Davis, you're putting yeah. Schneidlin in for. Uh, like, I'm, I'm not saying I agree with that. That's just that's just what, what I think, I think will probably happen. He never played five last year against Liverpool, did he? In either no, game, he played no, four. No. Played yeah. four in both games. I, th- I suspect Walcott might get in tomorrow. Yeah, oh, it's he, good he to have him today, back. He said he was in. He said he's fit, isn't he? Yeah. 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 I suspect Walcott will, will play tomorrow. Probably and and Bernard's availability is yeah. a big bonus as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, it opens up a, a few little options, doesn't it? Because, yeah. I mean, you know, it, the switch to a five at the back was because of, you know, so we were short of central midfield options, but we were short of options on the wing as well. You know, with Bernard and Walcott out, mm. we had essentially either a Wobi or a Charleston who could play on the wings. Like it, it, it made much more sense to play a five at the back at Leicester. I'm not sure it makes all that much sense. To play to play it against Liverpool, especially because Liverpool, as you, as the lads have said, have these marauding fullbacks who are just going to try and exploit that space. And I think that's something that Keane in particular struggled with in the first half against Leicester. Mm. He kept trying to get in behind that space behind Dean, and they were pulling Keane out a little bit too much. It just I, it just scares me having the thought of Sadio Mane running at him mm. from those wide areas. So I'd much rather see a four at the back, and, and at least that's then something. Uh, Keane and you know Mina Holgate, whoever's going to be starting. At least that's something they're more comfortable in playing. Do, do you think Tom Davis will get a game tomorrow? I hope he does. Now, the, I, I, like t- taking that Leicester game out, I mm-hmm. think he's been one of Everton's best players. You know, since the West Ham, from the West Ham game onwards, I think he's been one of Everton's best players. And yeah, he made a couple of mistakes against Leicester, but I don't think that should define what has been. And actually, yeah. pretty decent spell in the side. Well, I'm, I'm not, not exactly laden with options in that well, part of well, the exactly, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and in, in terms of mobility in a midfield, which you know you need, you need the best legs you can really against a, mid, a Liverpool team. Who's basically who's quicker on the turn? Who's, <laughs> who's quicker than Tom mm. or Schneidlin? Yeah. You'd say is, is he injury free? I mean, there's a suggestion before the Leicester game he was a doubt. I mean, he got he got through it okay, did he? Uh, Davis, or, Davis yeah. Yeah, yeah. Basically, uh, Davis had come back from the international break before Norwich with a knee issue. Mm. He hadn't trained all that week, and then he felt it towards the end of the game. And I haven't watched it back, but um, Silver has said that if you watch the last five minutes, he struggled to kind of get through it. Yeah, it didn't look like he was feeling any effects on Sunday, did no, he? No, no, um, no. He seemed, he seemed okay. Just had a difficult sort of second half, didn't he? Right. But Which is going to happen with a young player, isn't it? Like, you know, you can't expect them to be 
there's a, at, at the absolute peak of his powers in every single game. You know, he, he has a bad game. I think what what we need to do is give him the experience to just like throw him straight back in and let him get on with it. I know it, I know it's a difficult game, you know, going to Anfield, but you know, who's going to be more up for this game than at Anfield than Tom Davis? Yeah, there's a bit of sympathy off me for him on, on Sunday, not for the fact about both goals. And he gave the ball away for one another chance, wasn't it? Yeah. I think yes. in the second half. Is it when it's the fact that he's, he's, he's in the middle of the park with Sigurdsson. And if you have two midfielders in the middle of the park, you want one to sit sit, you know, sit deep defensive and the other one to be like more box to box. Now, Gilfie may be many, many things, but he's not a box to box <laughs> midfielder, is he? He's more like a centre forward, isn't he? So effectively, Tom is basically playing with somebody who normally plays like a nine and a half position, yep. doesn't he, really? Yeah. Which I think made it very difficult for him at times. And as we've seen at the end, where Gilfie starts bombing on, but actually he's probably one Gilfie a couple of yards behind him, you know. In terms and, of, uh, and, 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 if, and sorry to interject, yeah. Gavin, I know we were playing counter attack football on Sunday, but we'll probably have to play it more so uh, on uh, tomorrow night. Do you think, <laughs> it sounds crazy, but do you think actually Silver can do without Sigurdsson? Yeah, I, I, I was just sorry, wanted to say sorry. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what, what, what probably the option is tomorrow. Is not necessarily the most popular opinion is to play Schneiderlin as defensive midfielder and play Tom as the more yeah. box to box midfielder and, mm-hmm. and actually don't play Gilfie mm-hmm. and then play. You could do, you could play lots of stuff there, the options there. You could play Richarlison. I, I, I think probably tomorrow I'd like to see Richarlison left midfield, Walcott right, Schneiderlin and Davis in the middle, and Calvert Lewin and Keane up. Both. Front, no Bernard. You could play. Where would you play Bernard? You know, you could you could play Bernard wide left and play the Charles up front. Mm. The key, which yeah. actually would yeah, yeah which oh, would be an option. Doing, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, whichever. But I just like to. It goes back to Moise Keane playing out wide, isn't it? You know, <laughs> and we had this conversation the other week. Is that I think he can play out wide when he's actually playing up front, not when he's playing in a four-two-three-one, where he's a wide midfield. That not the same thing. Yeah. And I just I just like to look at him the last twenty minutes on. On, I know they were chasing the game and stuff, but I just like the look of them there and a bit more free, you know, a bit more space to run into. He looks yeah. far better mm. player than playing against two centre halves up front, you yeah. know. And uh, he definitely needs that space in those moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stretch, and uh, I, uh, I think he, I think he'll be ideal tomorrow. Or you know, you, there's two or three options there, but I think Gilfie definitely. Mm. Even though we scored, I was looking last. He scored four goals at Anfield, only for three different clubs. Mm. He'll for you know. So, yeah. but, but, but for Swansea, probably playing as you say, just off Lorenzo. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So uh, we haven't got a cough, but we've got nobody who's scored. No one's scored in the league derby tomorrow, will we? For us, just saying. <sighs> Just, uh, you know, okay, moving know. on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but that's an opportunity for a couple of players exactly, to, uh, to, exactly. to make the mark. Yeah. Um, Pran, before we, we get on to predictions and round up today's pod, um, what will be going through the mind of Jordan Pickford when the first high ball comes into the box that he has to come out and claim? Well, this is going to be a real test of Jordan Pickford's character. Uh, he's got to prove now that he is maturing and that he's not going to be affected uh, by what supporters chant. Because he's going to get abuse. You know, the cop are going to make life difficult for him. Um, and that should be taken as a backhanded compliment. The very best goalkeepers, you know, so NDR that, Gordon West, spent decades getting handbags passed out of the cop to him. Um, <laughs> Bruce Grabble, I was labelled a clown for years, you know, so by Everson supporters. But it was like with a grudging respect. I can't remember Neville ever getting any stick. I think he was just because he was so Too good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, any, you know, fallibility is going to be seized upon. Uh, and so Liverpool fans are going to make life difficult for him. They're going to chance all kinds at him. And he's got to not react to it. He's got to basically block it out and just got to focus on the game. He's a great goalkeeper, uh, but he does have, you know, concentration issues, shall we say. Uh, so it's going to be a big, big test for him. So yeah, you know, when that first high ball comes across, he's just got to block out all the background noise. He's just got to focus on his game and just concentrate on doing what he does best, which is, you know, so obviously, you know, so keeping clean sheets, but, you know, distributing the ball well too mm-hmm. and trying to, you know, sort of spark attacks quickly. Um, it's going to be a big test for Jordan Pickford tomorrow. And, uh, you know, it, it, it could tell us an awful lot about him and his development as a goalkeeper, how he handles it. And of course... He reacted very well in the Goodison derby, didn't he? Pulling off mm. a number of <coughs> point-saving mm. saves, if you like. Um, Title-denying saves. Well, yeah. 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 Say that, <laughs> I just have said it. Uh, yeah. Yes, From title-denying saves. Um, uh, any concerns about Jordan tomorrow night? Uh, no. Uh, I think, in, in a lot of respects, like that, that performance at Goodison kind of flies under the radar a bit mm. because, you know, obviously that 
mistake at Anfield with such a high profile one. Uh, it, was, it was always going to be hard for him to uh, put that right in the Goodison game, but I think he absolutely did that. Like that save from Salah, I think in particular, was an absolutely fantastic save. Uh, when Salah was running through one on one in that, I, I just thought, oh, well, just waiting for the back of the net. Type goal, I mean. uh, I think I was waiting for the back of the net to bulge, but uh, Pickford pulled off an incredible save. And yeah, no, I've, I've got no, no doubts. I think, again, yet again, against Leicester. I'm not sure there's really much he could have done uh, about about the two goals that Leicester scored. I thought he was pretty commanding of his area in general, you know, coming out making punches, making catches, you know, and Liverpool, not even just the crowd, Liverpool are going to make it difficult for him uh, in terms of set pieces. I bet you they're going to have somebody stood right next to him in terms of those set pieces to try and put him off his game a little bit. But, you know, he has, he, you know, he's come through these kind of scenarios before and, I think he is maturing as a player, and I think I'm sure we'll be able to see that at Anfield tomorrow. Okay, prediction time, Adam. We'll stay with you. What is your prediction for Liverpool versus Everton? The 234th, as you said, Derby yeah, yeah. Anfield tomorrow night. Uh, I'm going to go 1 1 and Moise Keane to get his first ever. Oh, oh, wow. imagine. Wow. I've got, got, I've, I've, I've gone there. Well, like, I've gone uh, there. Of an Adrian <laughs> mistake. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah um, can't say we're going to get these. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable about it. Okay. To be honest with you, yeah. If you look at like what Plano was saying, is like they're not playing well. They, they, you know, they can only drag results out for so, so long. At some point, you're not going. Someone's going to go against you. And we're due a little bit of luck. And uh, if we set up right, I see no reason at all why we can't get away with a with a draw. Well, or, then, or, then yeah. of course, we'll have the support of Pep, which you know. Yeah, yeah, his fingers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I absolutely. I said all along that, and proved a little bit on Leicester on Sunday, but the result didn't. The comfortable setting up in these fixes, and and I see the same tomorrow. And uh, we've got nothing to fear. I mean, I watched Brighton against Liverpool on Saturday, and Brighton gave give a couple to count count to themselves, you know. For another final prediction goes to you. Uh, how do you th- see it going? Um, I think the biggest misnomer in that. Big book of Derby cliches is a you know form book goes out the window because it doesn't you know the the, the best <laughs> the best team normally wins yeah. you know, which is why we haven't won the this millennium um, which is a horrendous thing to actually think about um, but we've drawn there on a number of occasions you know the the, the games have generally been you know, sort of tightish over the last couple of uh, couple of seasons you know the, the Goodison one that Manny stole in the 96th minute you know it was a good performance as was last season's at Anfield as was the Goodison game last season um, just you know one mistake settled you know both games so uh, without any great degree of conviction I'm going to go for a draw as well I'm going to say that you know we're, we're going to grind it out we're going to see a spirited performance. Um, I can't go as far as saying Moise Keane's going to score the goal. Um, I don't care who scores it. <laughs> it could be an own goal after yeah. Virgil van Dijk. You know, I'd, I'd be delighted with that. But, you know, just uh, I'll go for a draw. I've got my fingers and toes crossed. I'm going for a draw. Yeah, I think we'll score. I think it'll be 1-1. I agree with Adam. I think I always think to myself, if, if a big Sam team can go and get a point, mm. a Michael Sam yeah. team yeah. can go and do it. Yeah, yeah. And, and Liverpool... We're playing better two years ago than what they're playing now. So, confident. Anything can happen sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've seen, uh, we haven't done nostalgia today, have we? No. And uh, I saw an absolute annihilation one year. Uh, was it 78, 79, that great Liverpool team when Georgie Wood produced his best performance for Everton ever. Yeah. And it finished 1-1. One, one. It, what was the old phrase? At least Dick Turpin wore a mask. It was daylight robbery, but we got a draw. Amazing. So, you know, it can happen. And, and that was against the, the best Liverpool team ever. Yeah, so Easily. it can, it can yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. It can happen. We nearly made it all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Okay, chaps, thanks for your company. Thank you for listening. Uh, a prediction, of, uh, a full table prediction of, of the Blues getting something uh, at Anfield on Wednesday night. Quite what that will do for the future of Marco Silva, we do not know, but we will bring you... Any news on that, should it happen and when it does. So thank you very much for listening. This has been the Royal Blue Podcast. The Royal Blue Podcast from the Liverpool Echo.